I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I want to look at some issues that I've been dwelling on and I've been meditating on. I have spoken severally about the presence of God. And I've also talked about panpsychism. The presence of God is the essence of God. The presence of God is the nature of God. The presence of God manifests as his glory. His glory is the luminance of God. His glory is the radiation of the beauty and the glow and the energy of God, the power of God. Sometimes it manifests as grace. Sometimes it manifests in different forms. One other thing you must also realize is that you were formed out of substance. You were formed from the earth. And so inside you, all the elements of the earth are inside you. Ranging from iron to mercury to whatever, to even uranium. That's why when there are mineral deficiencies, you fall sick. And so, when the presence of God comes upon you, he energizes the elements in you. This illuminating bulb behind me, electricity passes through it. There is a filament inside and there, are, there is a gas inside, an inert gas. When energy passes through the filament as electricity, it comes to the filament that has a high resistance, it produces heat. The heat energizes the, the, the molecules of that gas and then they acquire more kinetic energy and more entropy and enthalpy is generated or whatever and the energized molecules now radiate light. Those same molecules are in us in different forms. We are, that we are soft does not mean that we don't contain these elements. Now, in Acts chapter 6 verse 15, when Stephen was brought to trial, when those in the Sanhedrin gazed at him intensely, they saw that his face was glowing like that of an angel. We will also see that in Exodus chapter 34 verse 29, when Moses requested to see the presence of God, and he went to meet God and dwelt with God in the mountaintop to collect the Ten Commandments. When he came back, his face was radiant. Face was radiant. The angel at the tomb of Jesus Christ radiated like the sun. You see, when the presence of God comes upon you, there is luminance, there is attractiveness, there is noticeability, there is radiance of his glory. I see young girls try to do a lot of stuff around themselves to look very attractive. I've seen people who are not physically attractive, who might not wear a lot of things around their bodies, but you will see that people are attracted towards them. People are attracted towards them. Anytime I watch this comedian, Aproko, there's one boy called Aproko, he makes fun of his looks, makes fun of himself. But people are attracted towards him. He won an award sometime. He's invited by prominent people. The presence of God in your life will stem from your thoughts. Your thoughts radiate energy. The Bible says in Luke chapter 11 verse 17 that Jesus knew what they were thinking. 
And the woman with the issue of blood said, If I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So your thoughts generate energy. And if you are to live a good life, think good thoughts. Your thoughts will generate positive energy. And your positive energy will interact with people with positive energy. There's a frequency band that will be established between you and them. You will find out that there are people who come around you if you are a decent person, if you are a disciplined person, if you are a determined person, if you are a motivated person, let me take it my usual way. If you are mad, if you are motivated, you are adventurous, you are aggressive, you are daring, you are determined, M-A-A-D-D, -D, towards achieving goals in life. When slothful, wasteful, lousy people come around you, they don't feel comfortable. One of my nephews says that uh, I have a demon. Why won't I have a demon? When you, you come with your own demons, imagine you are at the age of 38. You don't have anything to show. You didn't complete school. You are not married. You don't have a skill. She, he, he was, he will go into the poultry. My children walk in the poultry. I go into the poultry. My wife walks in the poultry. One day he went into the poultry. The woman walking in the poultry said that he was smelling. How can the odor from your body surpass that of the odor of a poultry? He doesn't take his bath. He doesn't wash his clothes. He's 38 years old. You give him food, he wouldn't wash his plates. So it was, and the devil has an odor. He was radiating the, the, the fragrance or the odor of stupid thoughts, backwardness. If you look, when I look at pictures of Europe and I look at America and when I've traveled, I see that the decency of the environment is a reflection of the thoughts of the people. Your thoughts will eventually affect your environment, will affect everything around you. You are a product of your thoughts. You are a product of your thoughts. Your speech are products of your thoughts. Your actions are products of your thoughts. When you think, your passion will give energy to them. Your vision will give direction to your thoughts. And then your drive will give energy to your thoughts to achieve a force. So what are you thinking? Somebody came to serve me. And I wanted to clean this room in this hotel. And I told him, he was a very nice boy. I gave him a tip. Then I asked him, what did you study? He said, business admin. What do you want to become in life? He said he didn't know. That he needed to think about it. Somebody who had graduated, apparently has done youth service, does not know what he wants out of life. And so life will give him anything. Now listen very carefully. God cannot break into your mind if you are a normal person unless he wants to hijack your mind to achieve a purpose if you are rebellious. And so when the energy of Jesus Christ is about to enter you to achieve a task, to do to speak and act on the elements in your body. He will ask, do you want to be made whole? The man had leprosy. Jesus was seeing leprosy. What do you want from me? Your thoughts, your desires, your speech will generate the energy that will interact with the energy of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ to generate the desired results. Blind Bartimaeus, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do? Was Jesus not seeing that he was blind? He saw him. But the, the thoughts you give permission to, the, the thoughts you give permission to, will determine what you will get from nature, get from your environment. This is very, very important. Extremely important. The woman with the issue of blood generated positive thoughts at home. 
before now, those who were treating him generated negative thoughts to him, her. And it affected her, affected her finances, affected her health. You must be careful what you think about. That's why in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, Think about these things things that are pure, things that will bring honor, things that have good reports, things that are pleasing to God. When you, I, I, I've, I've, I was thinking in the bathroom when these thoughts were coming into my mind. I've hardly sat down to think a negative thought about any person. I've hardly sat down to start planning evil about somebody. So I think good thoughts. And I discover that goodness and mercy then follows me. That's my desire for you. That you think good thoughts, product, productive thoughts, thoughts about your future. Now listen, when you think, don't think according to your pocket alone. Don't think about according to your limitations. Think about, think with the grace of God, the ability of God, the love of God, the power of God as accompanying what you are thinking. And when these two energies synchronize and harmonize, they produce great results in your life. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Think about these things. God bless you.